Sir, uh, Flying Bird is a mobile game, basically. You see, uh, and this game is a uh, side scroller. When the pay player control the bird, attempt attempt to fly. When they uh, hit the ground or hit the prey, uh, then uh, it is start again at this position. Uh, now I see. Okay, bird is killed. Okay. Bird, oh, that means bird is killed. That means your score is 19. When you 19 yes. times, you have avoided ah. this thing. Okay. That's it, sir. My name is Ajit Konmokar and all my fellow teammates. So today, we are, our team is here to present our first project on Python. We have made a game called Flying Bird using Python. Now I would like my teammate Automata to continue further with the presentation. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. So uh, today we are going to discuss about the uh, about our project uh, Flying Bird, which has been made by uh, the emerging programming language that is Python. So moving on, we have used uh, four uh, packages, uh, which uh, and uh, Python is a very flexible language, and uh, these uh, packages help uh, in making the uh, in making the programming language easy to use for the user. So the first uh, uh, package that we have used is uh, random. So random helps in generating random numbers and which will be used widely in our program. Next, we have used the package sys, which helps in providing uh, functions and variables, which is used to manipulate different parts of the program uh, uh, Python pro uh, runtime environment. Next is the Pygame uh, uh, package, which is uh, used in making various uh, video games, uh, and it helps in incorporating the mouse, keyboard, joystick, and other input devices. Next is the Pygame.locals in. This module uh, contains various constants used by the Pygame. It contains it contains and uh, automatically placed in the Pygame. Uh, modules namespace. So moving on, uh, there are various functions which are used in this uh, program. So the first function is the screen function. This function de defines all the uh, screen, all the uh, background and the graphics that are that are used in the program. Uh, that is the background, the bird, the pillars, the obstruction, the base, etc. Now the main game. Uh, I mean, the main game function has uh, used the is collide function and the get random filler function. So the, uh, the uh, we will discuss the main game is collide and the get random filler function together. So what happens in this game is that the bird has to uh, the, uh, that the user has to navigate the bird so that it does not hit a pillar. Once it hits a pillar, the game ends. And if the bird is able to uh, fly through the pillars, then the user gets a point. So the is uh, so the get random pillar. We use this fill, uh, uh, function to get the location of each pillar, and if, and the is collide function checks if the bird collides with any pillar. And uh, as we have mentioned earlier, the all if these two uh, functions are in collaborated in the main game function, where uh, it checks whether the bird is able to cross the pillar without hitting it or if it is hitting the pillar and die and the game ends there and uh, the at, in the end the main function is used to uh, wrap up all these four functions and execute the program at a time next is the uh, design it comes the design part of this program uh, all these designs are made from scratch from uh, uh, in Canva, and all the music and the sound effects 
are uh, all non copyrighted music collected from the audio library of the youtube studio now i will request my team mate kunthal roy to explain the function get random filler thank you alkomita good morning sir uh, today i will discuss about how to create a random pillar let's assume it is our skin we have two pillar one at upper position and one at lower position now upper pillar and lower pillar need to be bleeding on the skin here we can see that the pillar are out both side we have to arrange the skin exactly like this for this we need to create a function called get pillar function what this function return to us this function return a list containing the dictionary here we can see that x and y1 for upper pillar and x and y2 for lower pillar first we will arrange the upper pillar then we will arrange the lower pillar they have to be arranged so that there is a space between them now first we will generate pillar from 15 distance away from the skin bits then move this direction now we will generate the random number between our offset and screen height minus base Minus one point three into offset. So what is our offset? Our offset will be our skin height by three. And how to get one point three? For this, we have to try tuning. Now, how to get y one? Here, if I do pillar height minus y two, then what? Then? Our two pillar will be stick together. and there will be no space for this we have to leave the upper pillar in such a way that the space left between like offset so now our y1 will be pillar height minus y2 plus offset so it is our um, get random pillar function so now put So I will now request to Arthomita to continue with the presentation. So now let us come back uh, to the presentation. So now let us uh, come to the uh, to our most favorite topic that is uh, why what makes Python so so much flexible and so user friendly. python has some secret uh, or some unique uh, features which makes it so easy to use uh, some of the unique uh, now i'm going to discuss some of the unique facts about python the first one is very few of us know about this flat operator what is this flat operator about uh, we have all used lists and dictionary in all our python program till now but we have not known about this flat operator the flat operator is nothing but a small asterisk this flat operator helps in unpacking lists dictionaries 
for unpacking list we can use a single asterisk and for unpacking a dictionary we can use a double asterisk for example here is a code snippet which shows that uh, th there is a uh, function which uh, defines uh, which uh, which prints the value of x and y and there is a list and there is a dictionary now we are calling the function and passing the argue passing the argument as star full list which prints the uh, i mean the contents of the list and as as well as the dictionary that is this this asterisk or this splat operator over here and over here are unpacking the list and the dictionary and i can uh, and i would like to repeat that the single asterisk is used for unpacking list and a double asterisk is used for unpacking dictionary now another uh, most interesting fact about python is uh, till now we have learned a lot of programming languages like java c c++ and we have seen there that uh, we can use an uh, uh, the else statement for if statement i mean with respect to if we can use the else statement but here there is a, a special kind of uh, Uh, situation in python there where we can use an else statement for a for i mean for a for loop like if the condition of the for loop is not satisfied then it can go to the else statement just as it functions in uh, java uh, uh, just as it functions in case of if statements here there is uh, here there is a code snippet where it shows that uh, when the first condition uh, for, when the for condition is not satisfied then the else part that is no call for break else is executed for the second case that is this statement that is no call for break else is executed is printed so here it comes to the end of the presentation and now i will like ajit kormakar to give a brief conclusion thank you orkometa for the wonderful show and as we all know the actual knowledge is gained when we get a practical approach along with the theoretical knowledge python is an emerging language and it has overpowered java in many ways nowadays because of its flexibility and its easy access of its packages it is a very programmer friendly language and doing this project it has helped us in having a practical approach and in nurturing our python knowledge thank you thank you everybody thank you optimita and team kuntal adrit